Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. Today we're going to be showing you the FT Long Easy. Now this is a long awaited design. It can be built as a chuck lighter or it can even be built as an RC airplane. Now anyone can build this at about one sheet of foam in about one hour of your time. And also like anything we ever designed, free build plans, free build video will be linked down below for you so you can recreate this memory. Let's go inside and build one. So this is special, man. I love the fact that this started off with a chuck lighter and I think that's kept its true roots through the whole entire thing. The vision behind this is one sheet of foam, one hour of time, and a lot of fun. That way anyone can take flight, anyone can defeat the laws of gravity with their bare hands, whether it's RC, whether it's free flight, or whether it's some crazy kind of experiment they're gonna do. That's kind of the vision behind here. We, we do things like this which a lot of people can get behind, but not everybody can get behind. We want to make sure that people can get in the hobby with success, no matter what their means, no matter what their ability, and especially since time isn't really a friend of ours, as quickly as possible. All right, so basically what we did is we wanted to power it off of a common power pack, so we chose Power Pack A because that is a great power pack, not only for this plane, but also going through all of our simple trainers, our smaller planes, backyard planes, under 250 gram airplanes, which means you can legally fly it pretty much anywhere. So uh, I widened it up to be the size of the power pack. I also made the airframe a little bit bigger so it's a little bit more floaty and exaggerated some of the control surfaces just a little bit more. If it's on one sheet, that was our goal. It's basically made of about eight different pieces. So the neat thing with the chuck lighter here is that most you're gonna need for a center of gravity to establish balance is maybe one steel washer up in the nose, which takes away a lot of that guesswork and that stress. It's also a really good tool for stem as well too. Now, if you're gonna fly a chuck lighter, you're gonna be adjusting your elevons and kind of getting the right angle, tossing it. It's gonna glide really well and also be very stable. As far as RC goes and stuff, this is going to be a super rewarding experience. These electronics can pass from plane to plane, which is really cool. And it, honestly, I didn't think it was going to be easy to fly, but it really is. Maybe not your first airplane, but it's definitely something I wouldn't discourage someone to take a whack at if they're looking to get in the air really, really affordably. We want whole families engaged no matter what their age or ability is. And the fact is we can go very complicated or we can go very approachable. Even as a chuck lighter, this could teach your child how to basically use all the techniques that we have, build something. And while you're out flying something RC, even if that's maybe not in their, their means or their ability at that time, they can be throwing this thing around, which our whole end goal is to get families in a common activity together. So I think this fits a lot more things other than just being a really cool RC airplane. One of the materials that we use from day one at flight test that was very common is something called Adam's Ready Board. Oftentimes it's called Dollar Tree Foam Board. We use that material specifically because you could walk into a dollar store, you could pick up one dollar sheet of foam board, grab some barbecue skiers, grab some paint sticks, grab some different miscellaneous materials all found within your local dollar store and go home and build something that defeats the laws of gravity. This is no different. Uh, this is brown. That's because this is our special blend. This is paintable. It's water resistant. Uh, unfortunately, Adam's Ready Board doesn't have those properties. But for someone getting in the hobby that's going to just kind of crash anyway, this is a really good resource because you could literally buy a $1 sheet of foam board, grab some barbecue skewers, and you're building this whole airframe. Now, oftentimes people, you know, maybe younger, don't want to use razor blades or they don't have the time. They don't want to spend a couple hours cutting pieces out. Uh, that's where we offer our speed build kits. And that's just that. It's convenience. It's the ability to take a piece, pop it out. It's all laser cut, all the barbecue skewers, push rods, control horns, firewalls, Velcro, everything you need except the electronics is included in these kits. And basically what you've cut out of the picture is time. And the experience is almost guaranteed. Everything pops together in a very satisfying way. You have alignment tabs, things like that. But we don't want to just leave people where they can only get speed boat kits. So anything we design, foam board, whether it's big or small, we actually give out free plans for it. And a great gentleman named Dan Sponholz and then another great group of people called the Beta Builders uh, test our designs and they also contribute themselves. We say we have 60 plus designs. We actually have well over 100 designs and that's because many people from the community also freely share the designs as well. All made out of common, simple materials that you can find at your local craft store. All right, so rather than talking here, I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing finished off. We're also gonna build a chuck lighter that we're gonna head outside. The weather's beautiful. We're gonna fly both of them and show you some tips to getting them in the air. All right, so we have the FT Long Easy's completed. One as a glider, one as RC here. And first, we're going to show you if you're building with somebody, you want a chuck glider. This is really good for school projects. One hour, see if you're successful with conquering the laws of gravity with your own hands. This is going to balance right here. That's a really important thing. Planes don't like to fly if they're not balanced properly. What we found is basically the weight of a quarter is all you need to make it balance. Now, depending on how much hot glue you use, you may not even need any nose. Break. You want it to balance right on this crease, crease line where these two angles meet. And as you can see, you can just hold it like that, and if it feels like it's pretty close to balancing, you should be good. Now, depending on how hard you throw it, you may want to adjust your CG a little bit. We also just deflect these up just to give a little bit of reflex in the back end, maybe about a millimeter or two. All right. All right. Only one Time thing to left to catch. do. All right. Glide test take one. Mr. Long, easy take flight. Ah. <laughs> 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 
That's pretty cool. So we're using the random piece of uh, this little washer thing here. And what you can do is when you find something to weight it down, whether it's clay or a coin, each time you toss it, you can adjust the CG to get a different performance. And you saw when we first threw this one, it flew for a little bit and then it ballooned up. That basically means it says to us that it might be a little bit tail heavy. So what Josh did is he moved it forward, make it a little bit more nose heavy. And now, flies a little bit a little bit better might need even more nose weight now when you get it balanced out right you can start messing with these uh, control surfaces and you can even use a little piece of tape to tape them into place and you can make them do things like loops you can throw them at an angle and have them do like a boomerang effect oh yeah that's much better now it so now he added a quarter, which is gonna be a little bit heavier. And uh, not only is it going to not balloon up as more, but it's also going to penetrate through the air a little bit better because it's a little bit heavier. It's got a little bit more momentum. So you can go for a little bit more longer distance. <laughs> I can't believe how stable that is. Oh dang, it was about to go up higher. It's oddly satisfying and believe it or not, we have like literally every RC toy that you could ever possibly imagine in the shop. And more often than not, if you were to stop by our shop at any given time, we'd be more likely to be playing with gliders because you can have a ton of fun with such a simple form of flight. So if you haven't built a, a chuck glider, I definitely recommend doing so. But now we're gonna take it to the next level. We're gonna take the RC long easy. We're gonna put it in the air and see how she flies. So now we have our RC version here. And if you guys are getting in the hobby, there's a couple things we'll tell you about right now that are really important before you ever launch in the air. First, make sure your controls go the right direction. If you go to the right, the right aileron goes up. If you go to the left, left aileron goes up. Pull back on the sticks, up, forward is down. That's good to go. Our ESCs are calibrated. We also have a... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. We've also placed the battery all the way up in the nose and made sure the center of gravity is proper here. If you guys watch the build video, we actually take you from raw materials, whether you're scratch building or building the kit, all the way up to the flight, along with special notes. So if you're building this, don't worry. We're going to take you all the way to the point of success where you're flying it through the air. What do you say we get in the air? You ready, buddy? Yep, ready when you are. <laughs> <laughs> there we are and it's not dead calm today either yeah i'm surprised actually how well it does at flying in just a little bit of wind for how small it is now yeah you can't help but notice this isn't a very normal looking not plane, typical plane no. in fact it looks like it's like a backwards plane almost so how does it compare to flying this compared to a flying like a traditional wing and tail plane so i really thought it was gonna be more difficult to fly but it's pretty hands off uh, it does not have dihedral which means it's not self-stabilizing but with the battery being on the bottom it does really want to fly right side up for you uh, basically, it flies like a flying wing. You have elevon control, which means your elevator and your aileron are mixed together. I wouldn't say this is like the first perfect trainer because it is a little bit different, but the neat thing about canards is it actually doesn't allow the wing to stall when the CG is proper. That's why we talk so much about center gravity. But when you get up to a high altitude and you pull back on the stick, the front nose will stall before the main wing stalls, which means it's incredibly forgiving in the air. It really flies nice. So this is also what's known as a bank and yank plane. So it doesn't have any rudder control and it's basically just all those elevons. So the way that you turn left or right is you bank the plane one direction, left or right, and then you pull up, pulling the nose up, and that's how you actually turn in the air. You bank it and then you yank it. One thing I like to encourage people to do, a lot of people, you know, before they even get radios, they're not sure if they're gonna get in the hobby. Build anything as a check letter. Any of our designs can be balanced out and thrown around. That's actually when we design it, before we ever put radios in it we actually take it up in the air we wait the nose and we play catch with it for a while yeah and uh, you can do the same thing too whether you you know you haven't purchased radios yet build it as a glider get comfortable bash it up then build a second one as an rc and you can see it's hands-off control so i'm just watching it fly around in circles right now yeah i'd even encourage you guys to go as simple as possible start with a paper airplane if you've been kicking around the idea of getting maybe into the rc hobby start very very small something like a paper airplane there's literally no barrier to entry you're not going to lose anything so let's start just fiddling around see how good you can make something glide see if you can make something see if you can trim out a paper airplane to actually fly a little bit of a pattern that's how it all starts that's how it started for me and everybody has a similar yeah. story of starting somewhere well and speaking of starting somewhere a lot of people think that starting simple is not going to be the gateway to big projects. You'll be amazed that 810 Warthog that we're working on while we're working on this here, there's not many steps and especially not a lot of techniques between the two that are keeping you from having that big of a build. It's just bigger pieces and bigger motors. Yep, it's so all it's all the same. If you can build this, you've learned A folds, B folds, bevel cuts, you're ready to go. Let's see if we can put it in for a spot landing here. There we are. <laughs> nice thing about them being light too 
is it can take a hit really well. That's pretty cool. Very cool. Nicely done, man. Well, Thanks. this has been a cool journey. You started, you made a, the original profile chug glider. Yeah. I put RC on it and kind of made it into somewhat of an RC plane. And then now you've taken it to kit form, which in other words means this is available for you guys. So not only do we do free plans, we also offer our swappable speed build kit. Yeah. You can check the link below if you want to find out more about that. Most important thing, we want you to get in the hobby. We want you to have success. We want you to dream big through flight. Thanks for being part of the family. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this. We'll see you next time. See you guys. Flight.